Yo. So, because of the time, I want to skip a little bit ahead and then we'll go back. Every, every year, once a year, in the AWE uh, conference, there is a tradition to, we gather all the people, all the augmented people and all the VR people, and then we see what's best, what's better. Right? And the VR people always say, uh, we get more money, the augmented people say, we do this and this and we'll show you what, and here is my take on this. Okay. <clears throat> I think that whatever VR is going to be, whatever VR is going to reach, AR is going to be much bigger. Now, it's, it's just not, it's not that VR is not good, or it's not good enough, or it's not something, it's a very good experience. But it is still a tangled or very immersive, very intense experience that is not for everyone. Not everyone wants that experience. It's good for games, it's good for education, it's good for a lot of use cases. But augmented reality is actually, like, like um, Omri was starting to eventually tell about, it's... Is going, it's going to be something for the daily user, for the daily use case. And we need to think about this when we design things. So for example, the motorcycle example was perfect for this. You don't need UI. And if you don't need UI in order to not be a mental load, how do you design something? And if you don't have your hands over here and you have a clicker on your hand or something to control, how do you control an app? without UI, without control. So, going back. So I was invited uh, just to try and, I don't know, explain how we got here. Because 10 years ago, uh, this was my start. Uh, I saw a movie, I will show you in a minute, uh, what I saw that blew my mind. And, uh, and, and, and then, since then, we had a lot of a lot of things and events and I don't know developments, and I can show you like a brief of it. Um, if anything that you're going to tell me now going to surprise me in any way, it's not that I'm being a kind of a <coughs> jerk or something. I really mean it. I, I've I've seen so many things and I've heard so many things. So if if you are going to surprise me. So I will give you an hour of consulting for free. I, I will sign an NDA, whatever you want. I, I really have seen a lot, and, and I, I'm, I'm willing to share anything, everything, whatever you want, uh, because of the one thing, of the one reason, is that because I, all I really want to do is evangelize this technology because I really like the, 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 the concept of having something that is, that is uh, so daily, Let's think about, think about the difference between the PC and the mobile phone. The PC is something that we work on, we, we create stuff on, we do stuff in, but the, on the phone we, we, we just use it, right? We ju it's just there, it just happens to be with us from the moment we wake to the moment we go to sleep, right? But uh, we don't think this is a technology anymore. This is just something that happens to be in our pocket all, all the time. The same thing is going to happen here with VR and AR. AR is going to just be there. That's something we need to automatically like think that or design to something like this. So the verticals and the use cases of augmented reality. I, I don't know. Let 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 let's let's like uh, first. What do you think are the from from these kind of from the verticals that you see, or the use cases that you think of right now of, on AR, what is like the biggest one that you can think of right now? I don't know. Shout them out. Like. What do you think? Yeah. Tourism. Tourism. Fantastic. Okay. Like for, for, for translation or something, right? Or for guiding you in somewhere. So, yeah? Quest. Quest. Okay. Like a, a game in, in, a, in, a, in another city or another. Fantastic. Um, so let, let's just go through, okay? Navigation, 
indoor outdoor we we uh, Omri also talked about this so like let's say that we are going in a, we drive in our car we, we it will tell us where to go then we come back to the we pull by the by the place and then it will tell us what office it will guide us to the office we are going to have the meeting right it's like a business meeting or industry you saw you saw the the okay we we will show I will show something there education that's that's I think that not safety we could have something that will tell us where there are pits, right? Where there are like holes in the ground that we don't step on and stuff like that. AR will let us see kind of in the invisible information. It will be sort of like the 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 the, the, the thing that shows us what's going to, what what is there but it doesn't have a visual representation, right? It's it's an information that exists in the world but we don't really see it in sort of way so this is kind of the UI that you can you can you should or try to think about with all the complications of, of uh, overload that we talked about and what I'm going to try to tell you is how we got from how's the laser doing is this? No. okay never mind so the how we got from here from the AR markers to kind of a scene perception or scene understanding point of, of way. Uh, like what was the route from this to this? And so let's begin. My story begins in 2007, sort of. So that's what a friend of mine showed me in 2007, he said, okay, Shaka, we have to, you have to see this, let's, let's watch this. <laughs> and if you have comments, you feel free, right? Looks <laughs> like you're dumb That's what I was thinking, yeah. yeah. <laughs> This is like, a, you, we, we, I just said that we, we need less information, right? And this is very, a lot of, a lot of UI, right? This is a lot of, a lot of stuff, but, but still you understand where this is going, right? Now, it's, now it's, it's understandable where we are going with this. It's kind of a, everyone can be a mechanic today because of, we can just so, show you how to fix your car or how to do whatever you want to do, right? You can just have something that will show you what I do next and that's it, if it's understandable, if it's clear, if it's, if it's uh, something that everyone can understand so, or your user can understand, so I can do this. Um, so, but, but again, if, if, this is, if, this is, uh, if this is an overwhelming UI, so this movie can be something like uh, the Tom Cruise of the augmented, right, the augmented instructions. Um, After right this, uh, okay. so after this, after this movie, uh, I came back home. I I've saw I've, I saw it with uh, my colleague and I were kind of uh, students in Cologne in HIT, and uh, we saw this. We couldn't. We could, I, I don't know. I couldn't sleep for like two days, and uh, ideas kind of blew my mind, and. Uh, So, ideas blew, blew my mind and uh, of course uh, I, had, I had a new girlfriend at the time and she turned out to be my wife and we started up um, talking about this like for hours in, in, in anywhere, everywhere and uh, but the thing is that um, I, I was telling before to, to the guys that uh, my wife is like the she's the 
like if 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 uh, I don't know. She she didn't have an email before she met me, like ten years ago. Okay, she's like no technology at all. She's like the the uh, we 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 both. Uh, if it wasn't for augmented reality, I don't know if I would be like a tech person. But but it's like um, a luddite. What a, in and, English and the nice word is luddite. Name? Luddite. Fantastic. I don't know. I'll tell her this because she doesn't have Facebook or something. But. The only apps she uses, for example, is Instagram and WhatsApp, I don't know, something like that. That's the only thing she has on her phone, right? So it's nothing more than that. But she could stand here and explain about augmented reality like a lot, like that good. And uh, because we, we sat and thought about a lot of ideas, like, uh, I don't know, the um, having a portfolio, portfolio for your work, and let's say you are a, a dress designer, because we were students at the time, so let's say you're a dress designer and you want to go to sell your dresses for someone, so you don't need to walk with all your dresses to someone and make them dress and there's no, it doesn't fit, and so you just bring a marker and put it on the floor and then you stand over there and then you can see yourself in the dress, right? And you, touch, you just switch and select a design or something. It could be done, it, was, it, was, it could be done also back then. So a lot of ideas like this. And uh, but but my my guy in the, this my friend in the in the in the college told me we we must do something we cannot just keep it in as as a PowerPoint presentations like everyone else at the time we must do something but the thing is that the technology was not really like it was only we were flash developers I don't know at the time and and the the only thing that was ex exist there is like for C or C++ kind of hardcore like uh, libraries. Luckily, luckily the, the Japanese developer called Sakusha, I don't know if it's his real name or not, but that's how I know the guy, and uh, he was translating this library to Flash and that, that was born, uh, came to the world Flar Toolkit, FL Flash AR Toolkit. <coughs> AR Toolkit is a library that exists until today, but uh, there was a library for Flash. And the only idea, the only idea, I don't know if, does, is there anyone that hasn't seen like this shape ever? Okay, so good. So you all know, you all know what these are, right? The, the, the markers, right? So, the only idea of these kind of things was that we can track the, the, the black square, and then we can understand the pattern inside and then understand <coughs> the identity of the plane that we put, the virtual plane that we put above it. Then we could, that was the goal, right? And this was, this was how it looked back then, or the technology. That was the quality. So speaking of, take a look at the speed. This is real time, kind of, that's not me, but the, the, I tried to build kind of the flash uh, apps that I had like years ago, but it didn't work, so maybe next time. But, but uh, that was actually a real speed of, of using this thing. And he actually made a lot of smoothing as well, but if, whenever you see the, the, the little, uh, the, 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 the cube fade in, fade out, that's where the marker tracking lost, right? That's, that's kind of, a, uh, yeah, over there, there's like a, a, a marker lost uh, tracking, and that was the technology back then. Nothing else, nothing more, nothing. If you made the marker bigger, the, the object was bigger, you could, of course, control the scale and the size of everything on the marker. When was that? That's... Eight years ago, the video, uh, it's kind of 10 years ago, uh, 2008, this video. Uh, the, the, why he brought a video and why he did it in Vimeo and not YouTube, why is it so special? Because it's a multi-marker app. That was an app that could run two markers or three markers at a time. He's holding a marker in the end with his mouth and then a two. That was the miracle of this demo, right? And uh, I'm showing you how... Like what was the what was the beginning? Now what can you do with this? Uh, so the first thing, and that's 
you'll see that this is this is a good picture. You see the other one. The, the, that, that's the only proof that it was ten years ago. Uh, the, or, or, or better said, that was before I met my wife who dressed me. The, everyone at the time had a business card. That's that's kind of you wrote code to the AR community. You had you had to have a, a kind of a business card with this marker thing. And what what I did on it, I. I constantly uh, try to create some some things that would be usable for others, usable for I don't know non-coder kind of non-coder people. I write code, but I don't call myself a software engineer. I, prototyping is kind of more adjust. I don't know, but the, w I did stuff that that people could use and and add their own content, right? Add their own stuff. Right? So. You could whatever you could do in this app. You could take a business card, right? You put your your card. You, you another thing in the future was that you could actually change what's written here because at the beginning we, you couldn't change. That's what came with the app, and that's what you have. And in the future, we actually managed to create something that changes the pattern. But eventually, in this app, you had to you could control how the visualization of your work would be. Would it be like a you show your, uh, you, you take a, uh, it's not a phone, it's a, you, you put it in front of your laptop and then you can swipe the, with your mouse like between planes of information or you could turn the cube or you could turn your card or you could make the card rotate automatically or whatever you wanted but you could do this with a simple like UI that I made for the person, right? So that was that, was that one. Um, the second one that I, I made uh, was that you would hold the two markers. This green thing, uh, I, I'm, uh, I didn't say in the beginning a lot, but I'm a game designer uh, in the call, so I had to, had, had to do some games. So the, this was like, the, uh, like your treasure, and all the, the circles are coming at you. And you need to stop them. How do you stop them? You hold your two markers, and when you are when they are far or close, this this creates kind of an electricity between them. And if they're close, it's stronger. And if they're farther, they're, it's weaker. But the the red ones are stronger. The blue ones are, you know, weaker. So you would need to do kind of to play with this. But the design, and this is also complementing something you said uh, earlier. The design was a little fast, like the balls was move, were moving a little fast and eventually the tracking lost because you would have to move like so fast, right? And it broke, it, 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 didn't, it didn't work, this game was a complete failure. The second complete big failure is, can someone guess on what's the, what's the big design failure in this kind of thing? You need a screen to look at. What's that? You need to look at the screen or your phone. There was no phone, but but back at the time, but you only worked in front of a computer. So I was I was sitting in front of a computer and, and doing this. Yeah, so that was bad anyway. But but the uh, but the thing is that it's not connected to anything. It's not it's not connected to a reality. It's not augmented reality. It's just it could be I could just take the camera, put something like a, a I don't know a white space out of it, right a black space a uh, black canvas, and then just do it with the images. <coughs> it's not. It's just joysticks, right? It's not something that makes it unique. It's not something that turns this experience, augmented reality doesn't turn this experience into something uh, extraordinary, or it doesn't speak with the environment, or I don't know, something like this, right? It's just a 2D game, and uh, it could be done anything with anything, <coughs> with everything. So, the, so I, I thought about something else. I thought about how can I do a game when I'm... When I'm, um, <laughs> yeah, right. So how do I mo make a game that I move my m uh, uh, move the user? The, I want the user to move. I want the user to do something. I want the user to behave differently or change their behavior. But I do. I cannot change the w the, the position of the marker. I have to place the marker and leave it there and have make sure that the computer identifies the marker and that's it. I don't I don't move the thing. So. I, I didn't. I, I saw the movie actually later on, but 
I placed the marker somewhere, I, I made a bigger one, I placed it on the floor, I made the short, I placed the computer in front of the user, looking a little bit to the marker and on me, and then I created some sort of a level design of walls that come in at you, like a cubes that come at you, and then you would have to, you know, to fit yourself. What's the problem in this design? How can you know if the user fits himself perfectly? Exactly. How do you know when the user touches a cube? How do you know when, I'm, when I have an error, right? If there's a wall here, comes to the head, how do you know that? So what I did was attaching another markers on the hands, or on your limbs. But so it wasn't so, so good, but it was funny. I'll, I'll tell you how, what, how this game uh, got bigger the, the, in the next version. So, the limitations of the and, and and I'm going to give you another uh, question now, so and, uh, raise yourself. The, the, you see the paper over there? When the guy showing that he's tracking a bent paper? That was also like a big thing back then. Like, uh, it, was, it was really hard to track something that is that is a market that is not pure square. But, uh, so the paper had to be straight, the, 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 the tracking was a little flickering if, if it moved too fast, etc, etc, etc. How do you solve something like this? Do you, do you have any ideas of a paper that has to be straight, let's say, you, as you see here, what I did next uh, with the business card, I made it you know, I put it on a cart bo carton box or this, I, I, I put it on palsy, if I don't know how to say it in English, or uh, on, on this material, and this, this stays straight, right? How do you make something, something that can be tracked uh, from a lot of directions, right? And, but these are the, the, these are the problems. The thing, the solution was a cube, making a cube from a few markers. You would take uh, a few markers, bump, uh, attach them together, and then when when this marker disappears, so this marker exists, and then I can potentially have the same augmentation on top of the same location because I know what's the orientation of the whole thing together, right? This is very similar, eventually, and I will show you this game, this was the kind of the best uh, game that, that, I don't know, that I think, the best design for the marker <coughs> technology. The, this was the beginning of the, what later on Bufolia created, the box kind of tracking, when you track a box of, for marketing. Do you know the, you can, you can take a book, scan it, put it on Bufolia or whatever, Metayo or whatever the, the platform was, then you can track the book or the, the box from all over the direction. That was the beginning. Okay. Uh, let me show you the just a few minutes from this uh, this game. Julian Oliver, <coughs> he showed it in 2007. Later on, he did. Uh, I'm, I'm, I think you know. Uh, you should know. The inventor of this uh, eventually created some sort of an app called uh, 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 Color, Color AR, Color, Color, Col AR, which is kind of a drawing of, uh, I don't know, animals, and then you let your kids uh, to draw, to, to paint inside this, this uh, drawing, then you put your phone on and then it pops the, the creature but colored, like th with your colors. So this guy was the same creator of that, uh, the later <coughs> app. He made a, a cube of markers and then whenever he rotates the, the, the level, the, the character moves according to that direction. That worked fantastic, it was very good uh, design, it had, it had, I don't know, a hundred levels or something. This is kind of the kind of show all the all the levels and how to solve them or something, but it also gets to like working with two markers uh, at the same time, it's, it's crazy, it's a very very good design and it was very very stable, that was the main the main thing that I was showing the cube for because look at this part, this is very nice, so it moves so much. Uh, 
so, so that was that was kind of the 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 best design I saw for for making the. I mean, I'm I'm, I'm referring to the cube. The best thing that uh, they did in order to uh, to make it, you know, solidify experience. I don't know what to. Uh... Okay, so uh, at that point of time. <laughs> We got to, uh, we are now kind of 2009 or so, we had to uh, do, start making our uh, final, uh, final project in the, in, the, in the college. And um, of course we decided that we are going to do something with augmented reality and I'm getting to your question. Uh, you asked about the VR. Yeah. yeah. So at the beginning, the first idea was making some, because uh, my degree was in how to use technology in education, and I'm also very fond of uh, the idea in the back of, of having a quest in the, in the stuff, in, in, in an, a, anywhere. So I thought about, we thought about the museum idea, how do we make the visitor experience more engaging and more fun, how do, why don't we make something inside the museum. I will tell you very quickly the idea because I want to, to get to the other part of the scene on the stand. So the idea was... Let's say, let's say that you have a statue, you know, a statue of, uh, of the kind of the exhibition for the, you say, Adam uh, Kadmon, I don't know. Prehistoric. Prehistoric kind of ex uh, ex exhibition. So you come with your, your whatever it is that you're holding, doesn't matter if it's a phone or a glasses or whatever, and then you look at the person and it comes a virtual, uh, virtual presentation and he says, My friend, I have to go hunting. I broke my spear. Get me all the parts I need to build a new spear. Okay? I'm talking about kids now, okay? So the kids run around in the museum looking for spear parts. And they get, do you know, do you know when, you, uh, when you're in the museum in that kind of section, you have a lot of drawers that has a lot of stones, but no one ever opens them because they're boring. So that part, that is when they open this drawer and they see all these rocks. And I once I did, not once, a lot of times, I did a kind of like in an audience like this, like a parents and kids, and I was asking the kids, parents shut up, kids, what rock will you choose for the person? What rock will you take now and get to the person? And everyone was pointing, of course, on this one. And then, not because it's big, I, I actually had a, a, a big, I tried another time where I, I really pictured a kind of a big drawer and they picked the right one. And that was kind of the message of how to incorporate kind of the two, okay, in, a, in an interesting way. But luckily or not, my mentor at the time, uh, we were just about to start programming something like this, but my mentor at the time left the HIT and I had to, luckily or not, make a new project. And, uh, and and my eventually we came up with this. Uh, so let's say you need to operate this. Remember the BMW movie, the, the car with the technician? So let's say you need to operate this, but you don't know how. But if I would tell you what you need to do, so it would be a lot easier. Um, so that was the idea. But take a look at the difference between what I showed you before and what I show you now. That is a lot less UI and than it was before. Okay? That was actually intentional. So let me show you a little bit of the video of what we actually managed to make back then. That I could save. I managed to save. And look at the quality of the camera. That was like the I don't know I don't know when but I don't know what camera, it was not a phone even, so... What's happening right now is that I'm clicking with a mouse on my laptop, but on the live demo, or whatever we did back then, uh, on stage, we actually had a voice control, uh, so you actually spoke to the, to the device, I'll show you what the device I did. This is a live micro bell, of course, and you get instructions, step-by-step -step instructions how to make a popcorn, okay, just as a demo. And eventually you're told to turn the, the heating, the, 
put the timer on, and close the door, etc., etc., etc. Okay? Open the door, close the door, open the door, open the door, click the thing, close the door, but I forgot to close the door. <laughs> right? I forgot to close the door. So that was a big design failure. Why? Because when I presented this uh, in the in this conference, you'll see I presented it. This I, I don't remember the name, but he was it was like he was he was uh, actually at the first time it happened. Look at the device. I will tell you a bit uh, in a second what's the device. The he was sitting in front of the thing, activating the thing, tell, telling it, hey, I want to make a popcorn. Da, 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 and it starts to run, the, the, the door starts to open, and he said, uh, and he just sits there, waiting for the, I don't know, so make it cook, I don't know, whatever you do, so you, you already know what you need to do, so just cook, right, the, uh, you don't need me, but then we, we, we explained about the fact that you actually need to open the door, so there was a lot of, a lot of things that we didn't even think that would happen. The device, because of your question, I'll show you what, what, was, what was here, what, what was that thing, it was a... <coughs> Vuzik's camera, uh, Vuzik's uh, eyeglasses, back at the time, that was the only thing we could found that was relatively cheap, that was about uh, $700 or something. Uh, we didn't buy this, this was the developer. We put a camera on, just like you said. This was, this was black. This was the, the, the only use case this had was that you sit, you plug it to your not phone, computer with a USB, and you listen to music, you see movies, or whatever. Like a mobile, uh, mobile movie kind of movie screen, and we plug a, put a camera on top of it, put both of them in the computer, took the image from the camera, put it inside, and like you said, exactly like you said, this is kind of an AR instead of VR, right? Um, but we dreamed on on a thing like this exactly, but with with a, with no with no, uh, no, no black thing that would block it. Um, what I wanted to show you is... Okay, never mind. So, you, you get the idea. So, it's kind of the... Uh, no? yeah. So, you get the idea of, uh, of, of what I was going, going for, and the only thing that uh, the real controls here, like if you really wanted to, let's say, make a laundry machine, or make a make a factory trainer, so you would only need to change XML or an editor that we later on designed to be a visual step-by-step -step instruction created. Um, so it was really easy to use with a library of all these kind of rotating thingies and etc. Um, I'll skip all the the there's a lot of interaction. Uh, ideas that we had, let's say a, a lot of, uh, you talked also about, Omri also talked about how you click and how you do all the clicking and, and here or there with gestures, no gestures, so there was a lot of things of, a lot of thinking about rings with markers and, and distances between the markers, let's say I have, a, I have two markers on my, on my fingers and I'm, when I'm doing this I'm making a click, or when I'm doing a, a, a this I'm making a click, it's, I, I don't have to put my hand here all the time. I have a mar I have a representation. I have a thing going on. But when I'm just showing a controlling marker, I'm I'm doing something with it, and then I'm leaving it, putting back my hand. So that was the click, right? I, I don't really need to have a constant um, uh, pressure in my hand. So that's th there was a lot of ideas back then about this, and. That, that, that work actually got me to know Ori in Bar, and, uh, which is the AWE creator, and if you don't know, I will show you in a minute, and, and uh, Georg Klein, I would like to show you one movie over here, so... Yeah, okay, yeah. okay, when you asked me, uh, Omri asked me one thing, what was the one thing, or not the one, but what, was the, what were the things that everyone thinks that they are reinventing now, that were exist always, that, that, that the idea was like forever, right? So here is one of them, one of them. By the way, the, I think that at least three or four Tries, like, of, the, of the demos you already showed were already reinvented as ARKit exactly. apps. Exactly. And <laughs> for example, the blocks, 
where you have to move your body and this kind of things. There is an app doing that. And I think one of the interesting, if you really uh, go over all the things that are being created now, you see that so many things are just uh, reinventions of things that have been tried before. Usually they fail because of user experience and because they are not interesting enough. Uh, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, so, so this is only one of them. That was 2004. I wasn't even dreaming about augmented. And it was outside, uh, fully tracking. Like when you when you walked with uh, over here, you would, uh, th there was a point cloud. It was not a, it was a steady augmentation, relatively steady. Now I will show you the steady augmentation of Georg Klein. I think that Georg Klein was kind of the, <laughs> The, the best unknown developer. I actually met him, uh, talked to him uh, a lot about his work, but uh, but uh, we tried to use it. But we but since it was um, uh, in C and C plus plus, we couldn't even uh, I don't know. We tried, but it, we we weren't. That was the point where I decided that I'm not going to be a developer. <laughs> uh, kind of. So, so if I can just yeah. just add so, a little bit, yeah. uh, people that are interested in the algorithmic part or whatever, yeah. or what happened, uh, we talked about in previous meetups that it's kind of like a technological breakthrough. The AI kit and AI on these technologies that you're taking for given, uh, they are based on SLAM engines. This is actually where it started, and if you are starting to learn about SLAM, this is probably one of the first videos you're going to see, and you're going to know this guy because he invented a lot of that concept and, yeah, exactly. and, and showed that it's possible to make them uh, uh, well, so, it's very early stage, but still. Yeah. So exactly, these are real-time, not faked, not, I don't know, the every, if there's a defect, it, you see it, okay? If there is a defect, you see it, and there are. Uh, the, the, the other half of this movie shows a lot of defects. Uh, when I when I tried to when I started to play with this, he told me you need a, this and this machine with this and this language and this and this kind. Of, that was too much for me, but he shows a lot of things that eventually we created better, but uh, that today exists better. But uh, we will talk about how. But you can see that there are people around. It understands the points. It tracks them re relatively very good. And this is 2007 presented, so happened before. Uh, okay, I'm leaving you the link so you could also continue and see. There's a lot to see from this guy, he's, he's really talented. Um, so that was, that was actually a big disappointment for us. That was 2007, we talked to him about 2009 and we tried to, okay, was two two years ago. Like you, you probably made something that we can use, and that was a lot of this in, in the in the augmented reality uh, in the uh, augmented instructions uh, project, and we were pretty disappointed that we couldn't. And that was the time when we understood that if we want to make a real microwave that <clears throat> that I can really track, I want I want to take a look at the, the microwave, but I don't want this thing, and I don't want to hold my hand over here. Uh, anyone has an idea why I'm doing this? Light. Light, exactly. There was a light behind of it, and it blew the tracking off. And uh, um, the, the, I don't want to do that. I want to track a microwave. I want to track uh, a laundry machine. I want to track a machine. And also, I want to track the microwave. But if I'm looking from here, I don't see the marker anymore, right? I need to track the, marker, the, the, the same objects, but from all the directions. How can I do this one way with the markers? An idea? Invisible uh, infrared or something. Like that. Okay, okay, simpler idea. Take the six markers, put them on all around the object, or five because one sits on, on something, right? Uh, that's eventually how uh, the, the, again, before you try to do something. Um, so, between 2010 and 2013, a lot of things happened, like Bufoya, Metayo, uh, a, lot of, a lot of startups in Israel came to, were born, and uh, a lot of stability started growing inside the SDK of Bufoya, especially, and also Metayo later on. At the time, 
I was joining Omic Interactive as a game designer. That was the first time I was starting to make like uh, hardcore games, and um, and we actually did a lot of the, this this not related to AR, a lot of things for China and I don't know US. Not a lot of success. This was a lot of motion games, a lot of. Uh, Kind of, you, we were talking earlier about Kinect camera, so that was a 3D sensor, um, Prime Sense, Panasonic, a lot of 3D sensors at the time. I was doing a game design for this kind of thing. That was also when two of the earlier ideas of the, the, the electricity game came to live again as a hand tracking <coughs> game uh, with this kind of the same idea and the cubes. And the hole in the wall was also reborn, uh, reborn as a as a motion tracking game. Uh, so that was kind of the, the time. There was a clay app and there was a marionette. There's a lot of a lot of ideas we did at the time, and we had hand tracking. And this was I'm jumping to 2013, and this was the the thing that we did. So you were driving with your uh, <coughs> robot, um, helicopter, again real time, all the effects are shown, okay? No, no, I don't know, no special effects. Mm -hmm. And uh, if there are, you see them. So, the, um, so this thing walks on the floor, every time you see new virtual thingies popping up, it's because we are, have identified, we have tracked this area and we can put something on it, right? We can put scoring, we can put uh, key blocks, you'll see in a minute there are kind of blocks coming up. Shadow. And, what's that? The shadow. The shadow, there's a lot. And you can see that the, the creature understands the environment and also that the, when you fire it sticks on the, on the thing, right? The, it sticks on the walls or on the... That was the Intel RealSense camera, together with a tablet, um, and we. That was kind of the first demo of that, the first real serious demo that we did for this technology with seeing understand. It's not seeing understanding. It's it's um, a reconstruction. It's kind of a, kind of what what happens today with the or what will happen today with the AR core and and AR kit that will the next kind of feature with the 3D sensor will have, you will not only have planes uh, in the scene, you will have the real scene that was, is, is really good, like it, it's really good uh, technology. And as you can see, right, okay, you, maybe you saw also before that the, the holes, <laughs> you can understand the holes, right? The, the, we, we could understand the, the, the fits and so. That was that was that was this idea. I was a game design and, and a lot of things there, and I also showed it at AWE two years later, and uh, a lot of fun. And the what I wanted to show in this picture is that the green stuff is what we have identified and turned into a Unity environment. That that was kind of the the point of this uh, image. A year before, I made these t-shirts for the for kind of the booth right the, the for intel i don't know whatever and uh, i used metayo creator for this so i made a sort of design and then every year i had something else and uh, the uh, and I, I did something with the design or whatever animation with metayo it was very very easy at the time I'm, i was very sad when apple bought it uh, <laughs> But it was it was obvious, kind of. And, I mean, it's, it was either Intel or, or, or Apple to buy this company uh, because of Qualcomm. But we will talk about this another time. And uh, so, but the inventor of this idea was uh, I don't remember the name. Uh, forgive me. He'll forgive me. The, it was Total Immersion uh, Company. It was 2007. I saw this video. It's not a lot of time. You can see it later. He was standing on a stage, uh, the cameras were pointing at him, and on another screen you could see that there is a parrot <coughs> popping out of his uh, shirt, 
and he was actually moving on the stage and talking to the parrot. So that was a really good tracking, relatively really good. And this video also show that they had a big kind of um, pattern, kind of a lot of a big picture and tracking, very good tracking. They showed like a lot of uh, a lot of features that didn't weren't exist at the time, and I I stole the idea from him. And to my surprise. That was actually a really good success. Like uh, in 2014 or 15, I don't remember when, people like uh, snatching this, and Intel said it was one of the biggest success of the booth because, uh, and I didn't know why. Why? In 2007, it was like a big live show, but no one remembered. So that was a good thing for me. Uh, after the, the, the Toy Z game, the, the one with the robot, we did something else. We thought about, oh, it's not we thought about, but we wanted to design your house, right? Um, okay, I, I will not show you the video, but because it's a long video, but the interaction design in this video is really important. If you design UI or experience, take a look at this video, 2000, I don't know, 10 or 7, uh, 10. So he was he was a genius. He had a lot of options. This was like a ten or fifteen minute video. There's three of them of explaining the whole process of how he did or what he did. Fantastic. So try and take if you're interested in this space in this field, take a look at this uh, uh, video later. And uh, what I wanted to do is I wanted to take the I wanted to use the environment. We decided to use the environment in order to do to do all the things that you just cried about. Because you, we just cried about the fact that when you take the augmentation and drive it into a wall, then it will move through the wall, right? But we tried to solve that thing first. So, and because we had that, we had that, right? You, you saw that we could understand all the tracking of the... Um, the tracking of the, the environment. So, this is a real object. This is a real object. This wall, the, the floor, everything is real. When you take the this couch and pull it or push it, it will stick. It will it will stick. Like it will not move the wall. It will it will stay there. This is a virtual one. This is a virtual one. But the most the better thing. That was not the better thing. The better uh, thing that happened was lighting. And what you see here was the light. That was like the biggest feature of this uh, this app. That the light, when you put it on, the the both the virtual elements and the real elements change the the, the shade according to the light uh, type. So if we color the light here, just to give you some historical context for yeah. that, Fantastic. one of my friends was one of the first graduate students to work on this problem. Fantastic. It was actually solved in 19... was solved in 1990. Wow, fantastic. Until now. 1990. That, the, the problem of modeling lights bouncing in a room, 1990 Cornell Graphics. Now I'll uh, write it down. Fantastic. For so people the, uh, interested, it's still not available for mobile phones. So. <laughs> <laughs> you left too late. So again, this was a real sense camera with the, the same, the same, the same tablet with the robot, but with the... Oh, actually, I didn't tell you about why we did home decoration. Uh, again, coming back to my wife, whenever we move an apartment, and when we were students, we were moving a lot. Every time we and she like a, she's a freak of uh, internal interior design and that. Uh, every time I come back home, the, the house looks, the home looks different. Like the, the, the couch. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. But one thing she couldn't do, and she had to use my very important skills, the, she, she told me to take the pictures and stand somewhere so why she can look from, the, from back in the room, right? So how does it look when a person comes in? So you have to stand like this before you stick them to the wall, and, and then you. Wait, no, take the right, left, right, and then you switch a picture, and then, no, I don't want that there, put it in another wall, and so that when I thought maybe I should do something like a, you know, a wall painting kind of simulator, but, uh, and then it came up to be that app before, 
but the but but this one, how how time, how much time? Can I have? Uh, actually, almost. Okay, so so five minutes. I will not show this demo, but here is the wallpaper. Show the best one. Yeah, yeah, I will show you. I show you this. Yeah, only only you can see you, you, there's a link here to like a playlist very ancient playlist that you can take a look in and uh, you'll see a lot. I will show you this and then we can see for I do not need to show you a lot, but just take a look on this image, and I will explain a little again what's the device. This is, these are my boss and my, my other boss, the studio manager and the creative director. We are they're standing in a in a in a room with couches and furniture and stuff. I will show you from here. I'll show you that part is the important part. The rest of it is just a multiplayer shooter. The important part is what happens in the game. Look, look here. These are the real. These are real objects, and they are turning into virtual environment. Okay. These are the real things, the real objects from this scene, turning into virtual objects. So, what is the difference? And I will stop it here because eventually, what this turns into is like a multiplayer VR battle shooter thingy. Doesn't matter. But the important thing is that we have turned from one scan, one scene that is scanned and turned into one layer, into a layer, but every object in the scene can be extracted. Okay? So you can take this podium, you can extract it from the layer, and then you can do something. You want to do a wall, you want to make it. So you replace it with something else. And that's important because you can take this object and identify it, recognize it, understand what these objects are, etc. So that's that's the, the, the future. Whatever idea you're thinking about, whatever idea you have, it must have three things. Either no, not either. Location it has to have a physical location. It has to have or physical relation to something in the space. Okay? It has, if it's a navigation app, it has to have a road to relate to. It does it cannot just be a, an arrow over here saying you have to go that direction in order to get home. No. It has to be on the space, on something physical. It uh, it has to be virtual, but in 3D. If you place an information in 2D over here saying, uh, you have to go to this and this place today. I'm, I'm aiming at Google Glass. Okay, I'm saying Google Glass. That's not augmented reality. Okay, you have to have 3D element, uh, object, uh, augmentations on 3D space. And you have to have, or you, this is a, a should, you should have Something that is relevant to me, the user. It, if it's not relevant to me, then it's useless, it's pointless, and more, more than everything. You know that movie? If you don't know that movie, please see that movie. That's hyper -real Again, there's a click here, you will see. I will try and send you the rest. Hyper Reality by Matsuda. It's a fantastic example of what Omri was talking before about overloading the environment and the reset pattern. The reset part is the best part of that movie, how the user is trying to make a reset and he doesn't succeed and that, that what he was showing there, fantastic example and uh, I think I think that's it. There's also a good movie site but, but it's Israeli but again you can see all these movies over here and uh, yeah I think that's it. <laughs> So some questions, somebody? Uh, or are you tired? It's a bit late, I know. <laughs> Sorry. Overwhelmed. Uh, yes. <laughs>
Yeah. So maybe it was a bit uh, much to put two lectures like that. Um, well, one thing that I want to say is that uh, when I saw... No, we, we, yeah, we...